Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Anna and I am a macrame artist and teacher. If you guys have seen my last week's video, link up there, I talked about how much I love trying new things and today I'm diving headfirst into something that I've never done before. And that is, I'm going to dye my macrame cords. Or I should rather say, I mean, dye anything in general because I've never done that on any fabric, on any project. So this is super new for me. I'm really looking now to those of you that have more experience with dyeing, whether it's macrame cords or anything else, that you're going to leave your comments down below as you watch my process and comment with how you do it and what you would change because I really have no experience with this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm following a certain tutorial um, that I got from the lady who sold me the um, colored the colors, but I have never done it before. So this will be exciting. I am a little bit nervous about it. So because I have no idea how the outcome will look like, but let's hope it's a good one. Now this piece will be a wall hanging. So for my supplies, I'm starting with a piece of driftwood. This one, if you have seen my how to prepare driftwood video, is one of the, or was one of the stars of that video. This is the one that I completely finished with the um, varnish as well. So that's the one I'm using today. It is about 100 centimeters long. And then for my cords, I will be using the very simple five millimeter single twist cords in the color natural. My thoughts were that it's best to use something that has that natural tone, something that has a lighter tone so that the colors are more visible on it or it's more accurate, you know, what the color should look like. Um, and also the single twist, I feel like it will get colored better than if it was like the three ply or braided just because there are more of those twists in those cords. So the colors might not get applied properly to those cords. I don't know if I'm making sense, but that was my thought process. So those are really the basics. And then for the dyeing itself, I have two colors and they are, again, <laughs> Keep in mind, I have no experience. I have no idea what kinds of colors there are out there. So the two that I have, they are in a powder form. Um, so I will have to put them into water, which I'm guessing is usually how this works. But I also, in order to make them react and stick to the cords, I have to use a certain chemical. That chemical is called sodium carbonate. I hope my Google Translate did a good job translating that one to English because I, again, have no idea if that's what it's actually called in English. So I will be using that. And then, so the two colors that I have, one is like a gold-ish color and then the other one is like a rusty orange. And I want to use the two and the way I want to use them is my idea is that on the wall hanging, there will be a bigger section in the middle and then two sections on the sides. Each of the color is going to have one section on the side and then in the middle, I actually want to mix them together somehow. So that's just the color scheme I have in my mind. Let's see how it will actually work out. So all of that dyeing process in short will be the following. I have already cut all of my cords. So for the large section, I've cut eight cords. And then for the two smaller sections, I've cut 12 cords. All of those cords together, I'm going to bathe them or soak them in water together with that chemical. Then I will apply the different colors to them and then let them dry um, for like a day or so. So let's go through all of that. Get you 
and almost left town but there's something about you something about you i like about you i like i get too drunk and too scared and lied to you if only you knew i would die for you one of us one of us gotta say All the cords are colored and now they're supposed to stay wrapped in those foils for 24 hours. So I'll keep them in there until tomorrow. Tomorrow unpack them, let them dry out on my clothing wrap probably, and then start working with them. So far I have mixed feelings about this. Um, first of all, it seems like quite a process <laughs> to, to get them colored and everything and it's very time consuming and I'm not sure if I'm loving the colors and how I did it so but we'll see I will give it a chance until the project is finished to give my final verdict um, but let's see So the cords have fully dried now. I am still not a fan of the colors, but I am looking forward to doing the macrame pattern. So that's what I'm going to do now. And I'll leave my final verdict for when everything is done. So I'll take my piece of driftwood and I'll start with the bigger middle section, which is going to be from these cords. They are the mixed color. Um, I'll put everything on it with the Lark's head knot and then I'll explain what the pattern is. Now I'm up against the wall and I'm looking for your I went ahead and did one side and you can see really what I'm doing is just a very simple kind of this wavy pattern from the double half hitches. So let me now show you on the other side. So for the entire wave, these two cords are going to be our travel cords. And I'm starting and since all of these cords are super long, I'm definitely using the method for making the double half hitch knot really fast. You can see that up there if you're not sure what I'm doing. 
So I'll put all the chords on and then I'm taking the inner um, chord out of these two and pulling that one through that loop I made from all those chords and then tightening it up. And because we want that wave in there, I'm not going exactly in like a straight line here. I'm kind of, you know, swooping it down towards the end here. And now I just repeat the same thing. So all these chords will make a double half hitch on this travel chord. For the second wave or the next part of the wave, I will be first going with this travel chord. So that was the second one before, and then this one. Lights flash in the dark. I know you're coming back, aiming at my heart. And these things never come for me easily, no. But now I think I'm ready. I think I'm ready, ready. And so we will now keep going in this wavy pattern for a few more of these shapes. I know I wanna spend all my time now. Both of the sides are done, so now I can make a connection down here in the middle. So I'm going to choose one of those top chords as my travel chord and put another double half hitch on there. Then I'll add them onto the rows below. So where the travel chords are, they're both going to get one more double half hitch from those top chords. And then this one, the one on the left is gonna get one more as well. Okay, looks like Mila doesn't agree, but it's okay. All right. There you go for the connection. So the middle part is done for now. Now I will move on to the side sections. Um, I will do one, the whole thing, and then on the other, I will show you how to do the pattern step by step. So I'm starting the yellow section all the way over here at the end. At first, I am going to do some double half hitch knots. So these two chords in the middle, they will be my travel chords for the entire section. So I'll just put on two double half hitch knots on each side, again, using the fast method, since these chords are pretty long. Now notice that I did not make them exactly equal. Notice how long the chord is up here, whereas down here, there's almost nothing. This is because I know that eventually I will want this whole piece to hang like this. So in those first couple rows, that's when I need to prepare for that. So I always make sure that it, it's, it, I'm preparing for it to go that way eventually. Now with these four middle chords, I'm going to make a square knot and I'll start it on the left side. So with the left chord going over to two in the middle. And then I'll finish this diamond down here. Again, these two travel chords and these two making double half hitch knots. Down here to connect them, I'll keep going with this one as my travel chord, put on this travel chord to connect them and then already start with the two, again, making that same shape. 
So after we connect it, then it's the same thing like we did up here. So I'll then just keep going, adding a few more of these in this section. All right, down here for the connection, I'm doing pretty much the exact same thing I did in the middle. So I'm taking this cord as my travel cord. And then with the other one, used to be travel cord, putting on a double half hitch. Making sure it's nice and tight. And then on each side, starting with this one, I'm taking the third cord from the outside and putting on just one row of double half hitches. And that is the connection. So because the driftwood has that wave to it, I ended up putting five of the diamonds on this side and only four on this side. That is the same as over there. Now, two other things I want to point out to you. Notice how the square knots that are in the middle, they are mirroring each other. So on this side, I was starting with the left cord. On this side, I was starting with the right cord. And when it comes to these crossings, notice that it's always the cord that's going inwards. That's the one that's on top. Again, the other side is a mirror image of that. That is just to create some nice symmetry in the piece. Okay, I am getting closer to the finish line. The plan now is to add some fringe from, again, going back to the natural cord. So not colored, just the plain natural. And I am going to add it to all these sections. So all these outer sides, wherever there is that one cord on the very outside, I am going to be adding the fringe with the Lark's head knot. Once that is done, I will do some trimming and then we'll see whether that's the end or whether I will want to do anything else to it. Here it is. In the middle, I just added some beads because it looked a little bit empty, but this is it. Final verdict. It's not that bad. Like I don't hate it, but it's definitely not my favorite. I think I just overdid it with all the different colors and the different, um, yeah, I guess the different colors. Like I, I kind of like, this one like where it's mixed the two shades together like i wish i had done everything in that mix i don't or like everything in just one of the colors like either just the yellow or just the orange ish one but not like everything mixed in together like one part just orange one part just yellow and the middle of the mix like it that plus I mean that um that fringe on it the white fringe I don't think that that looks that great either so yeah 
I don't love it. I'm sure that there will be people that will think this is lovely. And of course, you know, like we all have different preferences, different styles. This is just not um, it for me. Plus, I mean, the whole process of dyeing the cords, like it was just so, well, I mean, it wasn't that time consuming. Like it wasn't that difficult or anything. I guess I'm just not somebody who would enjoy like having to put on gloves and, and do all this like prep work and stuff. I just like to cut my cords and get to the macrame. <laughs> so it's it's probably that also that just didn't, um, you know, it, that, that didn't make it my cup of tea. But I'm glad I tried it. I mean, it was something new to try out and you know, not every day is a great you know, piece of art. So um, yeah, I know I learned something from this. But let me know in the comments how you like it and you know, what did you think of the whole process? How I was dyeing the cords? Would you do it differently? Have you, do you have any experience with it? I'm really curious um, how other people do this. So let me know down there. And if you did enjoy the tutorial, even though, you know, I don't like the piece so much, give the video a thumbs up, really helps the channel to grow. And that is it for me today. I will see you next week. Bye.